Hello, my name is Jerry Thomas, and I am the AIEA secretary. But also, I am going to be introducing the ribbon skirt making webinar here. So I am going to share the presentation now. So again, my name is Jerry Thomas. Um, I'm actually a beginning ribbon skirt maker and I'm a beginner uh, sewing. So this is um, the project that I actually um, worked on during the pandemic. And I took a workshop to learn how to make these ribbon skirts. And I'm going to go step by step um, creating the ribbon skirt with you. And then also um, taking a look at some significant or cultural significance about the skirt. So going into some of the cultural significance, um, mainly the ribbon skirt was uh, introduced by the Plains tribes. So there's a lot of influence from um, the tribes in the Plains regarding the color, the fabric, the make of the skirt. And the skirt has many different meanings to how the skirt was built, how the skirt was introduced, and what is the meaning, you know, up to this point um, currently in um, the Plains culture. So having the multi-levels of cultural significance, it, um, it is worn by women and um, those experiencing womanhood, um, it symbolizes, you know, womanhood. So a lot of um, baby girls wear skirts and then also um, girls growing up into women and also it symbolizes the adaption of culture, meaning that the skirt, you know, introduced back in the 18th century, um, Cree tribes actually in Canada, um, in one of the articles there, it talks about how the Cree culture um, adapted to Western culture, where the skirt was introduced um, in Western fabrics, Western ribbons, all those types of materials were introduced to the tribes in which they, the tribes claimed it to actually make their own style of skirts, but also having the colors from the ribbons and the skirt symbolize what, um, you know, what is found in their cultures, the importance of the colors, the importance of the sewing, and also, you know, it goes on to, you know, resilience. So tribes, they use this as a symbol of resilience for their women, and they do continue to wear these skirts in times to symbolize their movements and to symbolize uh, the issues within their communities, but also the uh, the changes that have been happening. So for example, when you see the missing and murdered indigenous women's and relatives movements, they see a lot of women wearing these skirts and then getting the symbol of the red painted hand on their, on their skirts. You know, a lot of red skirts have been made in uh, black and red. So it symbolizes, um, you know, what tribes have experienced and what have they overcome, but also what they want to focus on and sort of any issues and changes that have been happening for the tribes. It's a part of their identity and a part of, you know, their resilience. So in, in terms of that, it can also go into spiritual and political levels. Um, so some, for with the skirt, in its significance, you know, it can be very spiritual as well. A lot of women, you know, wear it to ceremony. They can also wear it to the workplace. They also wear it um, in terms of leadership. So you see um, the new um, Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland, she's actually been photographed wearing um, a ribbon skirt. And so now it's in the political level. So when you see that, it's actually touching on all these levels of womanhood, resilience or adaption to culture, spiritual and political. So it's really, it's a skirt that actually reaches into all these different levels. And, you know, it's a great 
tool that a lot of women would like to learn and like to learn more about. So I do have these two articles here and then two videos going into how to make this skirt. But you know, the articles also talk about the cultural significance of this skirt. So if you wanna do any further reading or watching, um, you can look at these uh, resources that I've listed. So before starting your skirt, what you wanna do is wash your fabric. Um, mainly I use cotton. So when I wash my cotton, I would like to wash it in cold water to reduce shrinkage. And then also when you dry your cotton, you would probably wanna put it in a warm or hot setting, but also keep in mind that the temperature, the higher the temperature is, the likelihood of shrinkage for the cotton. Next, you'd want to iron your fabric. The reason you'd want to iron your fabric is so that later on when we use the glue and ribbon, we need to lay the fabric flat. And then we also don't want the wrinkles there as we are gluing the ribbons on top of the fabric. So, you know, it just makes it easier to work with when it's ironed out and there's um, zero wrinkles. And then next, you want to prepare your sewing machine, you know, loading up your bobbin, your thread, having everything set. Um, I usually start my um, tension at three for my sewing machine. And then as we go further into the project, you're gonna switch it to a four and probably back to a three again. Um, but that's for a little bit later, so we'll continue. So next, when, like I said, in choosing the fabric, the recommended fabric is cotton. Um, we've seen other um, seamstresses actually use um, satin, in twill, not twill, but um, other fabrics um, for these um, for these um, ribbon skirt projects. But my main one is cotton, and uh, that I use. So first thing you want to do is fold your fabric. Um, so what I mean is folding your fabric in half. You kind of want to understand um, how the fabric is cut. So when you get it cut at the um, at the fabric store. Usually I would recommend two, two yards of fabric. So that's 72 inches. And that's going to fit actually, if you use, if you're, you know, if you actually um, fold your fabric and you cut it at the fold. So when you fold it in half, you cut it at the fold, that's going to be literally 36 inches that you have to play with. So when you're, um, when your skirt is, you know, that 36 inches wrapped in around, it'll still have room there. So you'll still have a skirt that will fit sizes small to 2XL. So next thing you want to remember is what your raw, where your raw edges are and where your factory edges are. So a factory edge is actually an edge that's not going to fray. It came off the um, fabric store that way. And we're gonna use the factory edge as the waistband. So the fabric edge, I'm sorry, the factory edge is going to be where we're gonna put the uh, waistband at. So that the fabric edge is the top of your skirt and the raw edge um, below the factory edge is going to be the bottom of your skirt. And then I should note the thread should be similar or one shade lighter than your fabric. So that way the thread is less noticeable. But for this instance, I actually used a darker thread because my, um, my fabric is gray, but I'm using a darker gray thread, which I usually wouldn't do. But for in this case, for the video, I am using a darker thread to, sh to better show you guys um, how the sewing is going to look. So what you're gonna do first is we're gonna fold the fabric so that we can do measurements. So first, now that you have your 72 um, inches from across for your uh, fabric, you're gonna fold that in half. So when you fold that in half once, you're gonna have 36 inches across. And then next, you're gonna fold the fabric again. So your factory edge is still gonna be at the top and then the raw edge is going to be below it at the bottom. So you're going to, so basically you're going to fold it twice because next we're going to be cutting from the folded edge of the fabric, but not 
the other end where there's going to be a raw edge. So what I mean is now that you have your four layers of fabric, you're going to be looking at the edge that's folded to do measurements. So you can see from the diagram there, once you folded the fabrics twice, you're going to take a look at the double folded edge. So that's the folded edge that we were talking about before. So that's going to be your skirt. And the other side is going to be just the edges that are going to be cut off. So now that we had that, you're going to measure the biggest part of your lower body. So to do this, you probably want to measure your waist, your hip, or your bottom, whichever is the widest part you're going to measure. So once you measure that piece, then we're going to use these next measure, um, these next equations to measure how far around it's the fabric's supposed to be so that you have enough room to expand so it can go over the widest part of your body. And then with the elastic at the end, it's going to basically engulf your body and then go in where the elastic is. So for me, I'm going to actually measure, I'm going to use an example measuring my waist. So for example, I'm going to start at my waist. My waist is 40 inches there at the example, but you're going to do plus half your waist. So my waist is 40 inches, so plus 20, so plus half my waist. 40 plus 20 equals 60, and then you divide that by four because you folded your fabric twice. So that's going to be um, divided by four. So 60 divided by four is 15. I advise not to go lower than 15 because at the bottom, this skirt is actually going to be square shaped. So we're not going to, this is going to be the simplest form of the ribbon skirt. It's going to be square shaped. So there's not going to be, um, your waist is not going to be smaller at the top and you know, your bottom's going to be wider at the bottom. We're going to actually have it sort of a box shape, which is the easiest way we can do this. So I would advise not to go lower than 15 inches. Uh, for the bottom because if you go lower than 15, your stride's going to be cut off and then you have the chance of ripping your skirt or pulling at the fabric, which is what we don't want. We want to make sure when we walk in our skirt, we have a glide and that it looks natural. So doing the math, you know, like you saw, it's going to be 15. So I'm going to cut at the bottom the 15 inches. So not cutting from the from the uh, factory's edge. I'm going to be cutting off the raw edge at the bottom. Now for the length, I would want to cut, let's see. So you're going to measure your length first. So where you want your, your waistband to hit down to where you want your bottom of the skirt to be. So for my skirt, I would me more, more comfortable doing my waist all the way down to my ankle. So that's going to be 36 inches from my waist to my ankle. But you're going to add three inches just because you want those three extra inches when we add the waistband at the end. And then also we're going to be moving on next to the hemming. So hemming the, um, the bottom portion you want to have an extra, um, an extra inch or so, so we can hem the bottom the way we want to, and then also, you know, the waistband. So the waistband is going to be another inch, inch and a half. So we have a little extra. So, but like I said, do not cut your factory edge off because we need that to make the waistband. So this is a simple map of the top and bottom of your skirt. So the waistband, again, is the factory edge top part. And then the bottom of the skirt is the raw edge. So that's what we're going to sort of be cut, what you should have cut off now. And then those three different colored lines are just symbolizing the ribbons that I'm going to be using for my skirt. 
So next, hemming the bottom. So you're going to use your measuring tape to mark the back of the fabric. So now you're going to flip over your fabric and you're going to make a mark using your pen or chalk or pencil and you're going to measure sort of little ticks across the fabric at one inch away from the raw edge of the bottom. So the first picture you see there, I used a red pen. That is one inch from the bottom. And I made that mark all the way across my fabric. So the back of the fabric, I marked it across. Next, you're going to fold your fabric to that line, that mark that you made. So then once you fold it, you're gonna hold it when you use your sewing machine and you're going to use the straight stitch. So if you take a look at the picture there, I'm going to use the number 10 straight stitch. And I'm going to stitch it across my fabric to, and then so it's going to keep the fabric at that line, which is where you see the fourth picture where it says so. So I sewed using that straight stitch, that number 10 sewing across. So that's very simple. So that's the first hem, but because you want that extra security, next you're going to roll it again. So you're gonna fold it. So after, yes, you're gonna fold it again over the stitch that you just did. So once you fold it again, this time you're gonna switch your stitch to the zigzag stitch. And then what you see in the picture there is you're going to zigzag stitch the edge. So in the third picture right there, when you're holding it, you're going to sew or zigzag stitch across your fabric going into the back of the fabric all the way to your folded side. So I make sure I ride that line all the way down. So this is what the hem should look like after you're done. So when you're sewing as well, make sure like you see on the right side of the edge of where I sewn that you, um, that you backstitch, meaning you hold your lever on your sewing machine down to back, reverse back stitch and then go forward again to just ensure that your stitches won't come out. So that's what the hem should look like when you turn over your fabric and that's going to be the side where everyone sees your skirt. So next you're going to make some markings on your fabric. So now that you flipped over your fabric and you see the side that everyone sees of your skirt, you're going to mark four inches above the hem, at least four inches. So once you make your mark, that's just to um, mark where you're gonna put your, fir your first ribbon. Uh, my personal preference is making the mark four inches or five inches above the bottom of my skirt. That's to make, you know, the ribbons look, you know, um, look not too close to the bottom. So now that you marked your, um, where you're gonna put your ribbon, you're gonna mark it across again. So like I said, this is gonna be on the side of the fabric that people are going to see. And then you're going to take your glue stick. Oh, and then also you need to cut out your ribbon first, making sure that the ribbon goes across your fabric, um, overlapping your, uh, your fabric edges. So you have enough ribbon to go across because the, the ribbon cannot be too short because once we sew the ribbons on, we're going to sort of cut off the extra ribbon on the edges, but not too much though. So now that you have your ribbons cut, you're going to then glue your first ribbon 
So you're going to flip over your ribbon, use your glue stick and glide your glue stick over the back of your ribbon. So you're going to glide your glue stick over and then you're going to flip over your ribbon and you're going to glue it lining up the edge of your ribbon to that line that we made a mark. So now that you've did that, then you're going to zigzag stitch the ribbon to the fabric. So that's the third picture there is where I zigzag, you know, making sure that you reverse stitch at, at each edge. Once you start, zigzag stitch all the way across and then, and then also reverse or um, yeah, reverse stitch and then come back again going through the fabric. So that's you're going to be the first one. And then when you start your second ribbon, you don't need to mark it again because you're just going to sew your next ribbon right next to your first ribbon. So you're just going to flip over your second ribbon, put the glue on the back, and then press down your second ribbon right next to your first ribbon. And then you're going to zigzag stitch again, going to and from each ribbon. So that's what you can see in the picture. When I used my sewing machine, I zigzag stitched, touching each ribbon on each side when it zigzag stitched. And I did that again for my third ribbon. So now that you've sewn on all of your ribbons, you're going to cut the edge of your ribbons close to the edge of your fabric, not on the edge of your fabric. So you know that you're not going to cut your fabric, but also it's just going to be sort of close to the fabric. And a good thing, well, a good tip to do as well, um, fabric is sort of made with um, plastic. So what I've seen some do is they actually take a lighter and they will lightly um, put the lighter um, along the edge of the ribbon and it closes it up so it doesn't fray. So that's just an, another assurance that the ribbon's not going to fray. So now that you've done your ribbons and you've stopped the fraying from the ribbons, then you're going to start hemming the side seams. So to do the side seams, you're going to fold the fabric once and you're going to sew, you're going to fold it about maybe a little less than half an inch over. And I'm going to sew a straight stitch to close it, to close the raw edge. And then after I sewed it, so you can see in the first picture, I sewed across the, with the straight stitch. So that's the first one. And then I'm going to roll it over again. So fold it over again. And then you're going to switch over to a zigzag stitch. And then you're going to zigzag stitch, close the, uh, the side seam. So that's what the second picture is. It's going to look like that once you zigzag stitch the bottom. I mean, sorry, zigzag stitch the side seams. So you're going to do that to both sides. So this is going to be sort of the second half of your, pro your project. So I just went through, after you have your two panels, you're going to sew them together. And then when you sew them together, you need to make sure to take your fabric and you're going to make the ribbons face each other. So we're going to sew them inside out. So you're going to take your fabric, fold it where the um, ribbons are coming face to face, line it up as best as possible. And then you're going to zigzag stitch. Not the furthest from the edge, but the inner. Um, so I, you can see in the third picture, once I lined it up and I, and I decided to sew, I zigzag stitched the inner part of the edge. So you can see that there's one, two zigzag stitches, but the first stitch on the left, that's my final stitch where I, that's my final zigzag stitch that I did. 
to sew the two fabrics together. So now that you've sewed your two fabrics together, it's starting to look like a skirt. So now we're going to start with sewing the waistband. So for this one, I would turn my attention to a number four if you haven't already. Um, this is because the fabric now we're going to be sewing some rolled up areas. So it's going to be a little bit harder for the needle to go through um, several layers of fabric. So now that I turned the tension to four, you're going to fold the fabric edge between one to five inches. So you're going to roll up, I'm sorry, the factory edge. So the top of, now that you are working with the top of your skirt where the waistband is going to be, you're going to fold the factory edge between one to one and a half inches. So you're going to fold it over itself to give it, a, so folding it between one to five and a half inches is going to give you enough room for say if you bought a one inch wide elastic or a three fourths inch wide elastic to go through later. So now that you've folded over the factory edge. Um, I did a one and a half inch just for a little extra room to ensure that my uh, one inch width elastic can go through. Now that you folded it, now you're going to zigzag stitch from one side seam to the other. And you can see on the third picture that I skipped over the, actually the side seams. That's because for my machine, it's the needle is not thick enough or strong enough to go through all those layers of rolled up fabric. So I skipped over the side, se the side seams and then I just left open the, um, uh, the side seams where enough where I can put two fingers in. So those two holes actually on each side, those are the holes that you're going to um, um, stick your elastic waistband through. So now that it's sewn shut, as you can see, that's going to be what the last picture is on the fourth one. You can see that zigzag stitch where I sewed the um, factory edge down with the um, with the zigzag stitch that it's going to be enough room for you to stick your elastic band through. So now you're going to actually put your pin on the end of the elastic. And once you stick it through, you're gonna close the pin and this, um, this pin you're going to help pull the elastic through the waistband use, using the pin as a guide. And you're going to stick it from one side seam hole through and wrap it around your waistband and have it come back out through the same hole that it entered through. That's so you can actually stack both of the elastics on top of each other and then stick the pin through both ends of the elastic. Now when doing this, you need to make sure that the elastic is flat and it's not twisted. So when you do wear the skirt, the elastic is not going to come undone from the pin because it's turning from how twisted it is. It's going to be laying flat against your body. So in doing this, you need to remember um, beforehand when measuring the elastic. Um, what I would like to do is wrap the elastic around you and where, where you're going to wear your skirt. Like me, I would, wear, I would wrap it around my waist and then um, put, pull the elastic about four inches tighter around you and then hold the elastic end. So when you wrap around the elastic, you're going to have one hand hold the original elastic and then you're going to hold the other end of the elastic where you're pulling that four inches tighter. And then you're going to take that one hand that's holding the elastic against you and, and then clamp that shut so you can cut off whatever is at the other end in the other hand, um, the few inches of elastic that's extra. 
So that's going to be um, how much elastic you're going to use for your fab, uh, for your uh, ribbon skirt. So this is going to be the final product. So this little, so this skirt right here, you can see where my thread is because it's a little bit darker, but I used three different colors for the ribbons and that's because this is sort of a baby skirt. Um, this is a little bit smaller than normal, but I still use the same, uh, the same techniques. So I would say this skirt takes me about maybe uh, three hours to finish. Um, but it's a great and easy project. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, there's my phone number and then there is my email. If you have any questions about the skirt or if you like more, more information about um, where I got my information up from. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.